in today's video let's use Affinity and DaVinci Resolve to create this cool morphing effect. Here is a quick summary of the steps we are going to apply in this video. First, we are going to create the shapes in Affinity Designer. Once we have our shapes, we need to export them as an SVG. To create the animated morph effect, we are going to use DaVinci Resolve and import our SVG into a Fusion composition. Finally, in Fusion, we will animate the shape points to create the desired animation. Let's start as mentioned by creating the shapes. Here in Affinity Designer, I have my two shapes. Let me use the pen tool to create the curve objects. Once we have our curves, I will give them a border and name the layers. Let's also align them to the center of the composition. Before we export this, one important thing to keep in mind is that the two curves who will morph into each other will need to have the same amount of points. In our case, the heart symbol will morph to the tube symbol. If we look at the heart symbol, this has only four control points. If we check the tube symbol, we can see it has eight. So I'm going to add four more control points to the heart symbol. Excellent. One thing I forgot to mention is the canvas or the document size. For maximum compatibility, make sure your document dimensions will be the same as your video dimensions. So as you can see, my document has a dimension of an HD video, which is 1920 by 1080. Perfect. Let's make sure all the symbols we need on our animation are enabled. And now we can export this as a SVG. We can use the SVG for export preset. Now that we have an SVG file to work with, let's switch to Resolve. I already have an empty timeline opened, but we do need a fusion composition to import and animate the shapes. To create a fusion composition, I can right click in the media pool and select a new fusion composition. I give it a name and drag it to my timeline. Time to switch to the fusion tab. I already have a media out note and we now need to import the SVG. To import it, we can use the fusion import menu. After selecting our SVG, Resolve will ask for the image size. As we have set up the document dimensions correctly in Affinity, we can just press OK and continue. In our notes list, a new group of notes have been added with the name of the SVG file. When I link this to the media out, we can see the output. As our shapes are in blank, I'm going to add a white background. To do that, we can just add a background node. Set its color to white and make sure the nodes are correctly linked. Beautiful. We have our shapes on a white background. Time for the animation. I can double click on the imported SVG group, which will open up the group and we can see the shapes we created earlier. The idea is now to animate the heart node by changing its shape into the tube. Let's move the playhead to frame 0 and set a keyframe on the shape animation and then set a keyframe again on frame 20. I will now select the tube node and select all the shape points. We need to copy these points which I can do by pressing right click and then using the copy from the polyline menu. Now when we go back to the heart shape I should be able to paste the new points. To do that, I can right click again and use the polyline submenu. However, as you can see, the paste is disabled. This is due to the fact that we are only in modify mode. In order to be able to paste, we need to switch to insert and modify node. Once the insert and modify mode is selected, I can now paste the points. And now we have our new shape for the heart. Let's scrub the timeline and see how the animation looks. That looks interesting, but not really what I had in mind. The reason why this is happening is something called path orientation. Each path has a starting and ending point, and this enforces a direction. It looks like the orientation of the heart and the tube is not the same. Let me remove this SVG group and switch back to Affinity Designer to explain in more detail. Here we have our objects again. 
I will select the tube with the node tool and make sure show orientation is checked in the toolbar. This will enable a small red line in the curve. When we zoom in, we can see it a bit better. The line indicates the ending point. So, this path actually moves counterclockwise. If I select the heart shape, notice how the red line comes from the right this time. So in this case, the direction is clockwise. The two objects are not in the same direction and this is why we got this strange animation. I can easily fix this by changing the direction. I will select the node in the tube and press the reverse curves button in the toolbar. Excellent! Now they both have the same direction. For a smooth animation, it would also make sense to make sure that the starting nodes are close to each other. I feel like this node in the heart shape would fit better with the starting node of the tube object. To make this a starting node, I can break the curve apart at this node and then close it back. Perfect! As you can see, the red line is now ending in this node. Now that we have our shapes fixed, we can repeat the export and import steps. I will also redo the keyframing and copy and paste the tube points to the hard node at frame 20. Now let's have a look at our animation. That looks much better. As we don't need the tube shape, I will disable it, so it does not show up. The final step to finish the animation is to have the play shape appear when the heart morphs into the tube shape. I will put keyframes on the level and the shape animations at frame 0 and frame 20 and back in frame 0 I will lower the level to 0 so it's invisible and move all the points to the center. Excellent! Now we have the play shape fade in and grow as the heart shape morphs to the tube shape. Awesome! Back in the edit tab we can have a preview how things look. Make sure you have the render cache turned on so that you will get a smooth preview. The animation is quite linear. And to make it a bit more organic, let's go back to Fusion and enable the spline view. Let's turn on the keyframes on our SVG in the spline window. Pressing the fit button will now show all the keyframes. First, I'm going to make the animation a bit shorter. So I will select the right keyframes and move them a bit closer to the beginning keyframes in time, making the animation faster. Next, select all the keyframes and press the S on the keyboard. This will make a smooth animation, which is basically an ease in and an ease out. That looks much better. Pretty cool. To wrap up this video, let's do a quick morph back and then do a heartbeat effect. So to morph back, I will copy the shape points from the beginning, which is the heart, and then move the timeline to around frame 30 and paste them. To make the shape a bit bigger this time, I can select the shape box and resize the whole shape. Beautiful! Now we got an animation which morphs from a heart to a tube and then morphs back to a bigger heart shape. Let me also quickly add keyframes on the level of the play shape so it disappears. As mentioned, the last thing I want to do is to add a simple heartbeat animation after the morphing is done. To do that, I'm going to add a transform node before the merge. We can now use the scale property of the transform node and use keyframes to animate it. But I'm a bit lazy and instead of using keyframes, I'm going to use an expression. I can right click on the property name and select expression. This opens up an edit box where we can input a formula. I'm going to paste my formula in here which I will provide in the description. Basically it states to have the scale set at 1 for every 15 frames and for all frames before frame 40 as we're still morphing. For the other frames it will slightly increase the size. This creates a nice heartbeat effect where the heart slowly increases and then jumps back to the default size. Pretty awesome! I hope you liked this video and that it has inspired you to experiment with Affinity and DaVinci Resolve. Thank you again for watching.